welcome back to Naval Gazing at Camp David. This week's guest yacht is a mark that's established itself as the go-to performance cruiser for mid-sized liveaboard adventure, the Outremer 51. Today, we're going to review its specifications, pricing and layout against three similar vessels. And believe it or not, it's not the most expensive. Do a full tour asking what would Sylvia say? Naval gaze at a few innovations, give you a hint, it has to do with accommodation and shore hookup innovations. Have a look at the used market for three to five year old comparables. And finally, give it a Dave score and, a com and compare the results with all our previous reviewed yachts. And again, not a spoiler alert, but you may be surprised. Now, we have a wine pairing with our yacht of choice, the Outremer 51, and we head to the coast of France on the Mediterranean to the home of both Outremer and his big brother, Gunboat. And uh, we're in La Grand Motte. Now, in that area, we have Chateau Palmas. And our wine is the Clos de Meurs 2019 Languedoc. It's 90 points on Wine Spectator, 85% Syrah, 10% Grenache Noir, and 5% Moivre. Chateau Palmas is made of three estates. The castle, an 80, a 25 hectare vineyard in uh, Conas. The cellar, an 80 hectare vineyard in Nicole. And a 40 hectare vineyard in Co. And this particular wine is produced in the uh, Close de Mures. Okay, have a little taste of this. Hmm. I'd like to describe it to you, but I'm not a sommelier, but it, it smells very nice. Hmm. Now I give that a solid four out of five. Let's go have a look at the boat. Now, looking at the boat from the outside, again, those reverse bows, uh, it looks quite spectacular. It's a little bit dated, but they're addressing that at Cannes this year. Um, great lines though, and you know, very sculpted, very purposeful, a sense of quality and uh, refined production style at every angle you look at this boat. Now, jumping on board and looking at the new comparables, we're looking at the Neil 51, the Outremer 51, the Sea Wind 1600, and the Balance 526. So as we look at these, you can see immediately uh, that surprisingly, the Outremer 51, its upwind sail area is the lowest of the three. Now, having said that, we'll have a look at the weight and, and of course, the hull, hull uh, dimensions. Uh, but, but that is a little surprising with the Neil uh, looking at us there at the top end at uh, 171 square meters. Diving onto the cabin top, uh, you can see, uh, you know, it's a relatively slim hull form. Uh, especially compared to the balance and, of course, the Neil, which isn't really fair. <laughs> Um, and you don't have any uh, upstairs uh, lounging area. Um, you don't really have a, a lot of uh, forward, even pseudo cockpit area, although you can put cushions up there. You've got very long net, nets, uh, very long uh, uh, forward hulls. Diving into the actual uh, saloon, Again, uh, you're looking at uh, fairly limited space. Again, this is a performance cruiser and it is more of the 
previous generation where uh, they didn't really find a lot of ways to expand that space, but you know what they've done is elegant. If we uh, hop down then into the actual uh, cabins themselves, again you will see here we've got the uh, three cabin config. We'll actually be touring uh, the four cabin config. Um, you, you, you really, as I said with the uh, Outremer 51, it's either genius or, you know, more old school design, but you don't have a lot of room for clothes. And it could just be the French like they were with champagne, not bothering to put a foot on the glass so the ladies couldn't put it down. Maybe they just don't have enough space for clothes because it's designed by men who would like their ladies on board in as little as possible. Uh, I'll probably get comments on that one, but those French are genius. Uh, now, looking at the stats. so. Uh, this generation of the 51, it really uh, it is going up against um, some new generation boats here. It doesn't stand out actually in any particular area. Uh, the Neil comes in lowest on the pricing. Uh, the uh, the Sea Wind uh, comes in uh, highest on the length and lowest on the uh, draft. And uh, the balance uh, comes in uh, lightest on the displacement. Uh, the um, Neil comes in highest on upwind sail area. And the balance comes in highest in tankage. Uh, the Outremer, uh, a solid, stable, well-built boat, uh, is, is not leading the pack in any of those statistics. Uh, we'll have a qu closer look at that now. Before we go further, I just would like to ask, if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe, hit like, leave a comment, love the comments, and if you could, share this out by hitting the share button with two friends who enjoy boats as much as we do today. Thanks very much. Okay, hopping on board, we'll look at see what would Sylvia say. Heading up the mast, you got a single spreader mast. Of course, everything on board is very purposeful. Uh, you don't have recessed hatches, but uh, we'll see what happens in the next version. It's interesting that they don't have pull-out covers for the cockpit area on either side. Now, looking back here at this seat, the, the, the signature Outremer seat with the, uh, the tiller right there, the carbon tiller, it's fantastic. I will never forget seeing the fellow from uh, La Vagabond sitting on the side, looking down in a sunset and saying, everybody should be able to do this once. Uh, the seat is so comfortable it literally hugs you and I can only imagine how satisfying that might be. Uh, so you can tiller from this side, you can also tiller from the outside and other side and of course uh, steer as well. Heading up the uh, port side deck you can see those lovely dagger boards. Again the, the hatches aren't recessed but highly functional extremely long hulls. It's a, it's a shame on this particular one that there were no dolphin seats. I'm not sure if those are optional. Uh, the Langeron, very nice, but after you've seen the carbon one on a great circle, it's hard to go back to the white fiberglass one. I, even though I'm not a big performance guy, I'd probably have to have that just for aesthetics. Um, looking back down, you can see there's a little bit of forward deck area, but not very much. You could throw a I guess a, a foamy on there or two, uh, but you're basically beanbags on the trampolines. Uh, the, the one thing that's a little um, not something that I like is the way the anchor chain comes all the way down the launcher on exposed. Uh, I can only imagine stains on the fiberglass after a relatively short period of time, which would drive an anal retentive guy like me quite mad. Uh, heading down the uh, starboard side, again, you've got the um, main seat, a double seat uh, at the steering helm. Uh, all your lines, of course, run back as usual. Uh, great um, instrumentation there, uh, all your controls within reach, um, and uh, you've got handholds all the way down uh, the uh, side of the cabin top for safety. Um, good areas for solar, not excessive, but of course you'd uh, put a, a bank out over the, um, the dinghy. Uh, heading into the cockpit, I found it, I guess, in comparison to the 55, a little constricted because, of course, the 55 is so wide open. Now, it may have impacted me having the, uh, the, the side curtains down, but 
in general, it felt a little tighter, although it's very practical. I mean, you've got huge seating areas, lots of table areas, beautiful finish uh, to the uh, under the bimini top, and the entire fit and finish of this boat and all of their boats feels um, production in the best sense of that word. Uh, it feels refined, it feels well thought out, it feels highly professional. There is nothing sort of kit boatish about it in any way. This is a, a beautifully finished and executed boat. Excuse me for a moment. Okay, let's move on to a little navel gazing here. Uh, we started my uh, rant on convenience last week with uh, on onshore uh, or shore uh, water hookups and the fact that uh, as, as an old man and a lazy fellow, I hate going into uh, the various, under the various hatches and, and areas in the boat to find a uh, loosely coiled hose and drag it up and then try to hook it up and then not tangle it around stuff and anyways I, I'm, I'm over exaggerating like some of the old KTEL uh, ads but the bottom line is it's not necessary and neither is it necessary for the power cord I mean uh, the trawler business has been doing this for decades where they have a proper uh, electronic wound uh, power cord that's now stored conveniently in one of the side hulls. Uh, you just push a button, extend and retract your power cable, you maximize your time in the water, minimize your time at the dock, eliminate the effort and backache of carrying and coiling power cables and if you don't think that's a thing you're less than 40 years old. Uh, store your power cable in areas otherwise inaccessible. Now there's a thought you never had before. Free up your valuable deck storage space for other uses. Build, uh, built to provide years of maintenance and, and use in any environment. These are the, the, the retractable, the power retractable cable systems I'm talking about here. Uh, designed and assembled in the US, widely acceptable, accepted by major yacht manufacturers. Again, these are generally the power yacht guys, uh, sailing guys seem to be masochists uh, and fully tested and approved uh, to um, standard, uh, I, I, CE standards. Now, here's something for you. Not only <laughs> do you press a button, but you can have it on a remote. And can you imagine if it's clicked onto the remote that happens to also be your dock mate or yacht controller? Uh, we'll get into that a little further in future ones. But literally, just press a button from anywhere on the boat or off the boat and wind it in. How nice would that be? Okay, back onto the boat, heading into the cabin, into the saloon. Uh, nice big doors uh, and again, a beautiful atmosphere. Uh, not as, I mean, it is, it is definitely French, Euro, chic, refined, minimalist. Uh, the the forward-facing nav, nicely done. I love the fact that they have a built-in chair there. You know, this forward-facing nav ramp that most people have, uh, they're looking at an, a forward-facing nav station that has a stool, as if you're going to sit on a backless stool for a night watch. It just isn't going to happen. Here, at least, they have a nice built-in comfortable chair where you theoretically could sit there. Now, again, as I've said before, I would prefer a proper um, watch chair similar to what they have on the trawlers if you're going to have a forward-facing nav. And you can raise it up higher so you can get a better, better view. But that's my little rant. Um, Looking around, uh, again, the saloon, uh, very nicely done. All the fit and finish, the rounded corners, the Corian counters, uh, all of your upholstery is done extremely well. Again, very minimalist. You don't have the, uh, the diamond stitching or anything of that nature, but Outremer pulls it off in a way nobody else seems to manage. Uh, balance does pretty darn well, uh, but Outremer does that minimalist flat top and seems to make it look elegant and interesting. I, I don't know how they do it, but that's Outremer. Uh, we're heading now into the port side. Uh, this would be the owner's hull in a uh, three cabin version. Uh, heading up front, uh, you can see the uh, nice head here. Very comfortable. Um, uh, you've got uh, 
everything, everything's very well done. I think you have a separate shower there. I can't quite recall. Um, the bunks are there. You've also got areas to put a desktop there. Um, this is a, a very comfortable, well set up system. Now, if I was going to have this as my boat and I'm thinking of a few design elements, this is the three cabin layout. You can see it there. You've got a much larger head up front. You've got a, a, an athwartship berth taking up the whole width uh, of the hull. So you have one side access. You could still probably reach the head of the bed to make it uh, probably more effectively than you can on a uh, uh, fore aft config that fits the entire space. Um, but uh, one thing, a couple of things I would do here. I would look at building up uh, the bed area, raising it up to get more width, and turning it fore aft, giving myself at least a little crawl space along either side, if that's possible. Again, I don't know the exact uh, uh, dimensions that we're dealing with here, so I am talking off the top of my head, but on paper it looks like you could do it. And then, take a page out of the uh, 55 handbook and turn uh, the opposite side uh, forward cabin uh, into a walk-in closet so that Sylvia has a, a beautiful place to store all those lovely clothes for our Monaco uh, casino nights. So that's one look at it. Uh, a secondary uh, way of looking at it would be to basically uh, keep all three cabins that you want, turn the forward cabin into a walk-in closet, uh, and leave uh, the owner's hull with the um, inside sideways uh, um, head. Uh, so this would give you sort of your cake and eat it too with lots of storage, which Utremers again are pretty notorious for not having much of, um, and uh, would give you your closet and a bathroom and your third berth. Now this wouldn't be my preferred configuration because I really can't imagine wanting any more than one other couple on my boat at any point in time. Uh, now we're heading back on the uh, what would be the owner's side uh, towards the rear berth um, in this four cabin model. Uh, this is uh, again uh, put um, uh, athwartship, uh, and the thought that I had might be to turn it fore aft and use the width to give you a little uh, access up either side. But, uh, you know, nice little steps in there. The entire feeling in these, even though the windows aren't extraordinary in the back there as they are, say, in an HH50, uh, the feeling that Outremer has achieved here is, is space, openness, fresh air. Uh, it is, you know, videos can't communicate a feeling, but that's, that's the feeling you had in this. And, of course, everything is so nicely refined. That chair is great. Uh, the... Um, the forward-facing nav doesn't look slapped together. It, it looks thought through. Uh, heading down now onto the starboard side, uh, you've got a nice uh, little makeup area there uh, in this config. Well, in each of the, of the configs, this would be uh, two cabins, unless you did the little uh, navel gaze thing and turned the forward cabin into a uh, into a walk-in closet. Um, you have decent uh, storage on here. Actually, you know, the hanging storage in this boat I found to be almost greater than on the 55, which is a little bit surprising. Um, now, moving forward, uh, you can see again we've got the bunks. Um, uh, you've got the, the separate shower stall here. Oh, sorry, this is a wet head. My apologies. Uh, and then heading forward, you've got the bunks. And you can see the table on this side how, as it's uh, set up to create a little office. It's a good use of space. There's no doubt about it. And, and extremely well executed. Um, we'll now head back up. You got your escape hatch there. And uh, the, the entire aesthetic uh, is extremely nice. Um, top quality appliances, of course, all the way through. Uh, double burner hob. And uh, again, look at the upholstery. It, it, it really does look extremely high quality, even though it's basically uh, pretty standard. 
Uh, one last look uh, across the top and that beautiful um, set of uh, solar panels there over top uh, the uh, dinghy. We'll uh, hustle around here and have a quick look at the profile. Uh, it's, it's an attractive boat. It's, it's a handsome boat. She's a little dated uh, in her look, uh, but they've done a darn good job of keeping her up to date. Uh, and I just love those Outremer uh, seats on the, on the back there. Um, and again, a little birdie whispered to me that you'll have a, a, a nice little pleasant surprise coming up in Cannes uh, regarding an update on this vessel. But uh, she is a nice boat, beautifully executed, and uh, Outremer produces an absolute you know, top quality product. There's, there's no way around it. It's probably leaning a little more to the uh, performance side in its, in its preferences than uh, uh, Sylvia would go for, but, but there you are. So let's look at some pre-owned comparables. Here we are. Uh, we've got a um, 2019 Katana 53. So uh, bearing in mind our Outremer uh, sail away, if we take the 50% on top of the base price standard, would be about 1.4 USD. This 019 uh, Katana 53 is, is pushing 1.6. Um, I, I just wouldn't do it. I've looked inside this one. It's a little too Bally-esque um, in its fit and finish. I know she's given you another couple of feet, but... Um, I'm sorry, I'd, I'd go with the Outremer, uh, especially given the price delta, and I get a brand new boat. Uh, looking now, uh, boat for boat, the Outremer 51, a 2019. Again, a, a new one now. Uh, we're looking at about 1.4. This used one at 1.2. Uh, so uh, 200 grand, about 20% at about uh, your third year. Uh, it's holding its value very well. I mean, typically at this, you'd, you'd be looking at uh, um, about 30% off by this time, 10% per year for the first three years, and 5% per year for the next seven, then leveling out after 10. Um, so uh, overall, uh, if this sells for what they're asking or close to it, uh, it indicates that Outremer, and not surprisingly, holds value better than most. Uh, as we hop over then to our last one, we're looking at a Neil 51. Uh, you know, the, the Neil is a sexy, sexy boat. The 51 is a tremendous boat with tremendous advantages. Uh, it, it isn't the same fit and finish, uh, the same refinement as an Outremer, but it, it's a really cool boat. So here you're looking at uh, 839, 840 versus 1.4 for a new Outremer. Uh, that's a good deal. Um, you know, even considering some of the, the stuff you're giving up, uh, you're getting a lot too. Uh, it would be a hard choice for me. I, I might lead toward the Neil on, on, on this one. Uh, so we'll be interested to hear what you say. Now, on into the Dave score and just a quick reminder that on the Dave score, you can participate with me. Uh, by going uh, into the description and clicking on the link and you can add your opinion to this. So on the Dave score here, uh, the Outremer got hurt a little bit here. Um, she's down at the bottom of the list right now, uh, which given she's at the end of her tenure as a model, uh, probably not a big surprise. The interior elegance, I gave it a seven. It's, you know, when I say elegance, it, again, it's my opinion, just like this wine is. Um, it, it's very minimalist and uh, it, it's nice but it's minimalist and, and I equate elegance with a little more uh, zip. Um, the exterior, uh, it's showing its age so I gave it a six on elegance. Comfort, the interior, uh, I gave it a six. It's, it's a little too tight to be higher than any, anything than that uh, and, and the layout just doesn't have a lot of conveniences like the walk-in closet or you know, the, anything of that, or a, or a three-sided access to the berth or anything of that nature. Uh, the exterior, I gave it a seven. Those seats, I'm sorry, they rock. They absolutely rock. The only thing that compares to them is ORCs hanging your butt over the edge seats. Uh, so that really bumped it up. 
Uh, on quality, you got to give it an eight, if not a nine. Uh, and then on performance, of course, you give it an eight. Uh, the lazy sailor side, a seven, if not a six. Uh, everything leads back to the helm, but there's nothing spectacular for the lazy sailor. Uh, the condo, uh, you, 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 it, it, it got hurt there because it, it isn't a condo, Moran, by any stretch of the imagination. Geek score six, there's nothing really wildly innovative uh, here. It's a good, solid boat. Uh, value for money, it, you know, it's a, you're buying a, a brand and a level of quality, a level of performance. Uh, but for me, again, like this wine, this would score a six on the value for money for me and my goal of convincing Sylvia to come with me because she probably wouldn't be wildly excited about it. Now, again, if you're enjoying these, please quickly hit subscribe, hit like, and if you could share this with a couple of other boat guys this day, that'd be tremendous. Uh, and that will do it for this week. Uh, Sylvia told me that I had to shorten these up and get to the meat quick. So I've done my best this week. I hope it all works out. Hope the balance and the sound is good for Clive and Mike and I've hit all the high points. Thanks so much for watching. Share it out there if you would and we'll see you back here next week. Thanks very much.